Yo! What is up, everybody? Hey, we're back for another banger. I'm gonna upload it on the same day, get it over with. I am actually pretty excited for the second Punic War Oversimplified Part 2. Part Dos Uno. Oh, wait. No, just Dos. Anyways. Anyways. Let's get into it. This below. Make sure to grab it. Or, uh, oh. you know what? I did not was him. Hannibal's army had survived its famous crossing of the Alps, and he was now in Italy. With Hannibal's arrival, the Roman consul Scipio hit the ground running. In typical Roman fashion, he marched his army straight at the enemy, and Hannibal began preparing for his first combat with Rome on Italian soil. Before the battle, Hannibal wanted to inspire his men. So he staged a gladiatorial death match between captured Celt prisoners, with the winner getting prizes and freedom. He then explained that the whole thing was a metaphor. A metaphor? For what? You! These warriors are you! You're trapped in Italy with no escape. Your only choice now is to fight and win. What about the dead guy? That's you if you don't win. And the prizes? That's what you stand to gain by winning. And the fact that I've soiled myself in all this excitement? That... No, that's not part of the metaphor. Okay. Hannibal also smashed in the head of a goat. Again, for inspiration. Scipio, okay. on the other hand, I now arriving that in the air, you? opted for the more classic route of a rousing pre-battle speech. Look at them, men. Weak. Starved by the Alps. While we are the strongest military in the world. Oh, it's gonna this come at them. Easy. Just come like at them. 10,000 horse-sized ducks fighting a baby-sized baby. It'll be like Mike Tyson in his prime, kicking a baby. A tug of war between 10 sumo wrestlers and a... Help me out here, Ralph. A baby, sir? Yes. Yes, that's it. A baby. The point is, there is absolutely no possible way we could lose a battle this easy. So, yeah, if they everybody's do. ready, on my mark. <gasps> Jack! Is he already gone? The Battle of Tecinus was over almost as soon as it had begun, as the Romans found themselves completely outmatched by Hannibal's famed lightning fast Numidian cavalry. A key element in Hannibal's devastating double envelopment tactics. In the chaos, Scipio was yeah. wounded. I believe many, like uh, what Napoleon did, he had lightning warfare. And that's how he was able to conquer so quickly and with the ability of using cavalry. You know, uh, I, if you can be able to use the cavalry and the infantry, you know, non-cavalry units, if you can effectively uh, man mantle them and put them at the best position they can, you can put that balance between them, you kind of have a very massive advantage because these are made as light, kind of like, light, much lighter, can be easily much more vulnerable to attack, but they are on the horse and are able to also move very quickly and be hard to actually hit. So, you have that, plus your infantry, who are a little slower, but they could still pack that punch to really help out. It's a really good uh, balance that Hannibal did to win this war. Or, well, battle, not the war. Thankfully, according to some ancient writers, his handsome 17-year-old son, Scipio the Younger, saw his father fall. Scipio the Younger supposedly saved his father, and in the process, earned himself a lot of daddy's kisses. The Romans ended up fleeing the area, destroying the bridge behind them as they went. For a nation so overtly confident in victory, believing Hannibal to be an easy kill, the Romans found themselves running yeah, that also, I think, gives a wake-up call to the Romans, telling them, you're not invincible. You're not, um... You, you, can, you could still get hit. You could still get destroyed. Which, I think that's a good lesson for many. You know, like, many wars that have happened kind of gave a wake-up call to many countries. Like, the Holy Roman Empire, when they kind of crumbled down, it was a wake-up call for many of the German states to unite and make the German Empire. When 
you know, America lost, um, I, I, I the only word I can think is, like, Vietnam. It was kind of a wake-up call. You know, like, that we aren't really the most... Well, we're, we are the most powerful military, but it kind of told us that we can't, well, just jump into every war. We got to actually be much more careful about what we do, and we're in a situation where there's a chance we might not win, right? And especially with Afghanistan, that kind of taught us something important that, you know, we're not that good when it comes to, you know, fighting these, you know, coming the war to them and... and kind of guerrilla warfare, basically. I think that really does teach us that. And the other thing, too, that, you know, war's not pretty. We don't want this. We we keep going into all these wars, and that we should just go back to um, how we were before, and we should kind of just stop, you know, uh, trying to intervene everywhere. You know, are we really going to repeat what happened in Vietnam? What happened in Afghanistan with Ukraine or Israel? We're not. We're not going to repeat that. No way. With their tail. Also, sorry, I didn't mean to make it a little bit political. I'm, g I'm just trying to stay very neutral here. Between their legs. It was humiliating. And you know who thought so as well? The Celts. They began flocking to uh -oh. Hannibal's side. Just as he'd hoped. <laughs> Even Celtic... Wow, that actually really impresses me. Hannibal, just him being so um, strong and powerful, he, he used uh, peace through strength, right? And, well, not peace, but alliance, you know, getting new allies. He kind of showed the Celts at their game of, you know, strength and power. And he was able to show that so well that now they want to join with him, right? You, 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 if you want good allies... You gotta be tough and strong. You gotta be able to show that you can actually handle it. Right? Don't be afraid of getting humiliated. You jump to it. You make that opportunity and you become very well prepared with yourself. If things are getting really risky, sometimes it's okay to roll the dice and just go. Right? Hannibal, he did um, very intelligent strategies, but he also had very major risk. He played at a very high risk, high reward. He wasn't afraid to try and jump to it, right? And he also put, you know, played with the Celts correctly. He wasn't trying to be like all, you know, simp-like, where, nah, I'll, we'll do anything for you, we'll do anything for you. He's like, nah, join me. I'm strong, I'm powerful, I'm tough. I can handle it, Right? I can handle leaving. <laughs> I love that. Troops fighting for room you know, in the running camp Hannibal. began Sorry, to bro, reconsider. Bro, bro, so Man, off. I'm thinking we should try to join Hannibal. I hear you. Maybe we should bring him a gift. What do you think he'd like? Hmm. Oh, I know. Hey, Hannibal. We want to join your oh. side, and we brought you a present. <laughs> a gift? For me? It's gonna be the head. I hope it's Roman heads. Oh, please. Oh, please be Roman heads. <laughs> Running away from Hannibal was humiliating enough, but having dozens of Romans beheaded in the night. Oh. Now that's embarrassing. Tychinus had been a relatively small battle, but the psychological impact it had early on was huge. And it was only just a taste of what Hannibal was capable of. Despite the shocking initial loss, however, Rome still didn't seem to fully understand the danger posed by the monster now loose in their territory. The Senate was full of excuses. It's those traitorous Celts. That's why we lost. Yeah, and it was a cavalry battle. Wait until Hannibal faces our almighty legions. And our consul was bald. Once he faces our other fully follicled consul, then he'll really pee his pants. That other consul, Longus, had been in the south all this time, preparing to invade Africa. He had seen some success, even capturing Malta. But then he heard the news. Hannibal's in Italy? And I'm being ordered home? But, but I was gonna be the big boy! I was gonna invade Carthage and win the war! Well, you can be a big boy at home. No! Does somebody need a nap, sir? No! 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 And so Longus brought his army on the That's long journey. That's probably how he thought in his head, too, though. 
north. When he arrived in the area to decisively neutralize Hannibal, the two consuls joined their forces together, creating a double consular it's army. But the two consuls weren't exactly on the same page. Having a nice rest there, old man? I'm wounded, Longus. Pathetic. You don't understand. He's more dangerous than we thought. Maybe for you. Whoops. Listen, we can't just march straight at him like we normally do. We need to train our men through the winter, and we'll try again in spring. Sorry, I don't take advice from a bowling ball. Hey, hey, I'll kick your ass, Longus. Any day now. I'm coming. Just you wait. Oh, Scipio, you feeble old man. <laughs> Scipio was apparently quite cautious after his recent encounter with Hannibal, while Longus, typically Roman, couldn't wait to give Hannibal a swirly. So who would get their way? Well, when two consuls joined their forces, it turned out the Romans had an interesting system in place. They would each take turns being the one in charge. Consul 1 would lead one day, then Consul 2 the next. Back and forth, back and forth. As you can imagine, when the two consuls didn't agree, things didn't go so well. In this case, due to Scipio's injury, Longus probably assumed even more command than normal. <laughs> Hannibal had Celtic spies in the Roman camp. He fully understood the Roman system and Longus's hot-headed nature, and he knew he could exploit it. For goodness sake! What's wrong, sir? I'm trying to order some pizza, but I keep getting fed all these pers- Did a Hannibal with- you're oh, yeah. I knew it! I Rome knew it! I called it! A double consular I called it! And a I'm hothead. I called it. Hannibal needed to keep smashing the Romans in battle in order to maintain the loyalty of the Celts. And so he was eager to fight another <gasps> battle. The combined Roman force possibly outnumbered him, so he carefully crafted a clever trap, and he made sure to spring it while Longus was still in charge. The plan began with his army getting an early night's sleep. All right, boys, time for lights out. Sorry, but we got a big day ahead of us. Tomorrow, we're gonna massacre the Romans. Yay! Good night, boys. Dream of revenge. Gorzog, send out the cavalry. Oh. That night, Hannibal's Numidian cavalry made their way over to the Roman camp, arriving just before dawn. Hey, Romans. Wakey, wakey! What? What the? What's going on? Hey, Longus, your butt smells like a butt. It does not! Scipio, awaken the troops! Longus, these playground insults are clearly meant to lure you out. Well, it's working! Send out the troops! Longus, it's clearly a trap. And I'm falling for it! Send out the troops! Hey, guys, wake up. You're heading out for battle. What? But we haven't had breakfast. We're skipping breakfast! I don't think you can do that. As the Romans hurried out of camp, the Numidians began luring them back to the Carthaginian camp. Idiots! Where these gentle angels were just awakening mm. from their slumber. Eat up, boys! Uh, idiot. We're having pancakes! That's the, that's the other side of it, too. The, um... Don't be so hot-headed. When you go with the risk, when you go and be opportunistic, you don't you know, try and do something as stupid as what he did, right? You gotta be a little more clever. At least have one reason why it would be logical to do that. Don't chase after some small group when you know there's more there. It's clearly a trap. Oh. It's like, um, those Discord people that try to piss you off to make you, you know, go at them back and... It, like, just so they can have, you know, uh, attention, you know, don't, don't let the haters get you. While the Carthaginians were enjoying their hearty breakfast, the starving Romans were still on their way. That's Hurry up, really we smart. have to catch those Numidians. Hey, why have you stopped marching? Longus, there's a freezing river in front of us. Well, get your gluteus maximus in the water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Idiot. boys, time to lather up. This oil will insulate you from the cold. It also smells like lavender. Mm. There's the Carthaginian camp. Get ready to fight, men. S sir? I think the water from the river is beginning to ice over. I can't move. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You thought war would be fun? Sitting around a nice hot campfire playing truth or dare with your friends? Welcome to the river! They're gonna play truth or dare. Who do you like? Sharon. 
Guys, the Romans are here. <laughs> Having perfectly orchestrated events so that his enemy was cold, tired, and hungry, while his men were well rested and covered in oil. When the two sides engaged one another, the Romans That's were in really no smart, condition yeah. to fight. And the cherry on top? The previous night, Hannibal had sent out an elite force of men led by his brother to go Whoa. and hide behind a bush. They this suddenly is sprung out, encircling seen. the exhausted Romans, who were then cut to pieces. Once again, Hannibal's superior cavalry and double envelopment tactics had flummoxed the Romans. But the key word at Trebia was control. Hannibal used his intel on the enemy and the environment of the battlefield to carefully control the conditions of battle, creating yep. lots of little advantages for himself that paved the way to success. And concealing troops for an ambush? All of these things are what make Hannibal the genius he's remembered as today. As for Longus, he managed Bro, to... Bro, I wish Hannibal got more attention. People don't talk about him enough in history, man. Escaped the battlefield with a small number of troops. Disgraced, he didn't want the Senate to find out what had happened, and he began obscuring communications back to Rome. Longus, where have you been? We've been looking for you. Uh, nowhere in particular. Longus, 30,000 men are missing. Do you know where they are? Uh, they're taking a bath. 30,000 men? All in a bath? Yes. Longus, what's under that rug? Aurora Borealis? Aurora Borealis? Uh. Oh, well that's my consulship over. Good luck with Hannibal. Bye! Trebia had been a disaster for the Romans. And as even more Celts began flocking to Hannibal, Rome largely lost its control over Cisalpine Gaul. In Rome, complacency turned to alarm. Hannibal had outwitted them on their own soil and inflicted a costly defeat. But with that, Scipio and Longus's terms as consul were over. They were replaced with two new consuls, Servilius and Flaminius. Oh, the Romans great. may now have begun to realize the trouble they were in and the genius Hannibal had shown in invading Italy. The Romans had expected to be the ones controlling this war. Remember, they thought they were going to invade Carthage. Now their plans lay in ruins and they were levying 11 new legions to deal with the threat. Hannibal had completely redefined the war. But Hannibal had a little problem of his own. Things had gone well so far, but the Celts were notoriously fickle, and Hannibal needed to ensure he maintained their alliance and his base of support in Italy. Any Celts he captured fighting for Rome, he treated extremely well and allowed them to return to their homes. But the longer he hung around in their territory, eating all their food and leaving beard trimmings in their sinks, the more resentful they may become. They wanted to go south and plunder some Roman booty, and Hannibal also hoped to sway Rome's... Yeah, and probably get that, you know, other booty, if you know what I mean. ...other Italian allies in the south to his side. So from here, the path was clear. Hannibal had to move south. Just one problem. There were two main routes Hannibal could take to move south. And wouldn't you know it, that's exactly where... Yeah, you noticed too, though. Italy is very well protected. With all the mountain regions kind of isolating and blocking it from, you know, you get all the other kind of countries around, you know, from Austria Hungary all the way to uh, France. Which, Napoleon, that's again super impressive how he like crossed, you know, crossed the, the Alps. And with the painting obviously showing how major that truly was. Hannibal does kind of feel like an. An early era of Napoleon. The that, you know, he kind of had Napoleon from 1815. Two Roman consuls had taken fortified positions. If Hannibal tried to move on them, he'd be fighting from a disadvantaged position and could be bottled in. There is a third option. Ooh, tell me, tell me. We could move through this vast impassable marshland flooded with dirty, stinky, disease-infested water that at times would come up to our necks. But there's no way we would attempt that, right? He's gonna do that would it. Be crazy, right? He's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Hannibal? Hannibal's four-day trek across the Arno marshlands was hell on earth. 
almost as crazy as when he crossed the Alps. Imagine three full days unable to sit or lie down because there's nowhere to sit or lie down, meaning four full days without sleep, slugging through heavy mud. You contract cholera, your foot falls off, and Jim Bob directly in front of you won't stop pooping in your path. In fact, everybody's pooping in your path. Some delirious sleepless men would see clumps of mud and say, man, I could just sink into that. And then they would. When pack animals died, it gave nearby men a chance to rest, but only for a few moments before they were whipped back into line. Even Hannibal himself couldn't escape the torture of it. Hey Hannibal, if we Sky. see a Starbucks, can He's we stop? Crazy. I need to take a leak. What? Jeez, Hannibal, looks like you picked up a nasty eye infection. Normally for this sort of thing, we just wash it out with some clean water. But as you can see, water everywhere, but it's full of Jim Bob's poop. No worries, Doc. I'll just take care of it myself. Oh. <laughs> That'll be $3,000. When the now possibly one-eyed Hannibal and his army emerged uh, from the swamp. Oh my. This guy's brutal, man. Uh, like, would you cut your eye if you had, like, an infection? <laughs> he just doesn't care. Which, I don't know if the story's entirely true. I actually, um, it, it feels more alleged. Like, uh, what Oversimplify was saying. Possibly. But... Hey, if it's true, man, like, that's insane. They were shattered, but he had just managed to slip 50,000 men right past the Romans into rich Etrurian lands where he could replenish his supplies and his Celt allies could go crazy, securing Roman loot and booty. As fields and villages went up in flames, one Roman consul couldn't help but notice the hot-headed Flaminius, feeling it was his responsibility to protect these lands, rather than waiting for his co-consul to come join him, immediately left to go chase Hannibal. Now, this Flaminius was an interesting character. He was what the Romans called a new man. He came from the lower plebeian classes of Roman society, and as a result, he reportedly had kind of a screw you attitude to the establishment and a big old Yo. arrogant chip on his shoulder. Picture Sid Vicious wearing a toga. That's Flaminius. And Hannibal, thanks to his spies, knew everything. Kind of feels a bit like a uh, Trump, I don't know why. Which, um, okay, you know what, I'll move on from that comment, but I don't know, it feels a bit like a Trump, where it's like anti-establishment kind of theme. Just as with Longus, Hannibal knew Flaminius was just the kind of man yeah. he could lure into a trap. Hannibal led Flaminius to the entrance. Also, it's uh, pretty interesting because um, Napoleon too, he came from a lower class, right? Came from Corsica, which just got annexed by France. ...of a narrow pass along the north shore of Lake Trasimi. Flaminius watched as Hannibal's army entered the pass. I've done it. I've spotted the enemy. Uh, sir? That big follow us sign seems kind of like they're trying to lure you Yeah, in. they're trying to do the same strategy with uh, Scorpius when he messed up. Wait, was it Flaherty? I, I don't know. The other dude. Yes, Gareth, you know who and I'm taking the bait. Sir, this really seems like a trap. Yes, Gareth, and I'm falling for it. Daylight was fading. So for now, We're the Romans set up camp. Insanity um, is when you uh, do the same thing over and over again. And, and uh, it, to quote Einstein, insanity is when you keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. The two armies encamped across the lake from one another, and night fell over the two camps. In the morning, Flaminius would catch up to Hannibal, and he would be the hero of Rome. For now, the Romans got nice and comfy in their beds. Good night, Flaminius. Good night, Rome. Good evening, Hannibal. During the night, Hannibal ordered total stealth. As tens of thousands of troops scaled the wooded hills above the pass, there was Completely no one watching. undetected by Rome's what? scouts. What?
Let's go, girls. Flaminius took off across the lake shore to try to catch Hannibal. As he did, even the weather seemed to be on Hannibal's side. A thick fog rose from the surface of the lake, obscuring visibility. Look at this! This is perfect! The mist will obscure our approach. Hannibal will never see me coming. Oh no. They come from the side. Sir? Why does it sound like 50,000 Carthaginians are charging down the hill towards us? You mean 50,000 Carthaginians are charging right into my trap! The Romans found themselves completely hemmed in on all sides. With zero visibility in the fog, the fighting was terrifying and chaotic. Troops were pushed into the lake in their heavy armor where they were either cut down or drowned. And Flaminius, who likely stood out like a sore thumb in his consul attire, caught the attention of one Celt warrior. With his head possibly swirling with thoughts of how the Romans had decimated his homeland, according to the ancient writers, this Celt took his chance. Did I miss? Oh, no, he did! Oh! In the three-hour-long massacre, 15,000 Romans were killed and an equal number captured. An entire army completely wiped out, along with their consul. During the battle, the Roman vanguard had managed to break through at the front and climb the hill above the fog. When the mist cleared, what they saw was a blood-red lake and a sea of Roman bodies. Oh my! Worse yet, when the other consuls sent cavalry oh, to try to aid Flaminius' dude awesome. legions, they too were caught and defeated. A double disaster. The quality is so awesome. You know what? Maybe I will wait a year for oversimplified. I would prefer six months, but we'll try a year. Rome went into a frenzy. For the second time, Hannibal had completely decimated an entire Roman army. Romans were dying by the tens of thousands. Common citizens began flocking to the city for safety. Women waited by the city gates in tears, hoping to hear news of loved ones. This one man, having just led his battered army across the Alps the previous ugly. year, now stood less than a hundred miles from Rome. To this point, he had been a problem. Now. Hannibal was a crisis. And in a crisis, Rome took desperate measures. They actually had a system in place when dealing with an emergency of this magnitude. They would forgo their two consul power sharing system and instead temporarily give one man near total power and authority to be as decisive as he needed and hopefully salvage the situation. Oh. This all-powerful position in Rome. Either he'll make it or break it. Which Government I think I know had who a this name. Is. Dictator. It's actually where we get the word. But unlike modern oh. dictators, Roman ones didn't score perfect rounds of golf or ride bears to the Siberian tundra. They held their power for just six months before they were required. Limitations. Uh, yeah. Okay. I like this. I, I really like this strategy. I think it works pretty well. Uh, extra. So exact term length is disputed. Okay, okay. ...to give it up. Yeah. And in Rome's hour Seems of need, cool, the honestly. man chosen to be dictator in 217 BC, one of the most highly esteemed members of the Roman Senate, Fabius Maximus. So how would Fabius, as dictator, confront Hannibal? Well, Fabius anyway. understood that marching all of Rome's young men straight into a one-man meat grinder was bleeding Rome dry. Hannibal Clever was guy. clearly too dangerous to face head-on in battle. However, he was also stuck in their territory. With dwindling manpower and forced to live off the land, it wasn't a sustainable... You take over the environment around you. You take over your surroundings, and sometimes that's even better than just going at battles head-on taking over the areas around you. ...position to be in long term, and he could only remain there for so long. So, if Rome avoided battle with Hannibal to prevent any more crippling losses, and instead simply maneuvered around him, blocking supplies and taking out smaller contingents where possible, Hannibal would gradually become weaker. Kind of like what Russia did. 
when um, Napoleon invaded, which, by the way, I know I'm making a lot of Napoleon references, but it's just very similar. You know, like, uh, Russia used scorched earth. I think uh, Rome is doing somewhat of a similar strategy. Um, just like, kind of like, um, you know, scorched earth strategies of like the, um, what was it, the Northern War and Napoleon's invasion to Russia. Feels very similar to those. While they would gradually become stronger. And so Fabius presented his new idea to the Roman Senate. Okay guys, I have an idea. See if you can follow me here, okay? Instead of fighting Hannibal, when he Mirror. approaches, we run God. away. away. <laughs> yes, uh, I knew it. Napoleon. Napoleon's trash. How they uh, avoided Napoleon. Uh, what? Why? This strategy couldn't have been any less Roman. Romans were meant to march headfirst into battle, not run away from it. It seemed cowardly, and Fabius was extremely unpopular. At this point, Hannibal was continuing south. He had pride. I I get it. The whole taking the opportunity, but when you have someone like Hannibal, right, that's very different. What you'll need to do is you got to look at all your options. What's the best thing you can do, right? If you go head on, right, he's going to beat you out. You, you know, so... Wouldn't it be better to let him get in more and more deep into Rome, cut him off, and take your opportunity? You create your opportunities. If you don't have a good one, you make it. <laughs> right? I think that would probably be the best strategy they have. Because he's deep into Italy now. Right? He's deep in the peninsula. Easily can get cut off. Like, the Celts are all the way up here. Just saying, I think it works way better had to stay on the move to keep his army fed, and he was still aiming to undermine Rome's alliances in the south. As he went, in a calculated display of aggression, he devastated the Roman countryside and killed many Romans, all in plain sight of Fabius and his army. We're just gonna stand here? Yes. Are you a coward? No. But Fabius, that's my farm. Well, MacDonald, thank you for your sacrifice. You're a hero now. Think of the stories you'll tell. Old MacDonald had a, a farm. farm. <laughs> Shut up. But you know who else hated Fabius' strategy? Hannibal. He understood the danger he was in. Turning Rome's allies against her required Hannibal to keep smashing the Romans in battle. He couldn't do that if Fabius wouldn't fight him. Multiple times, Hannibal tried to goad Fabius into a He's fight, but him. Fabius like a, wouldn't or bite. Or Failing or that, he tried to turn Rome against Fabius. According to the writer Livy, he burned down all the farms he could, but any farm he learned was owned by Fabius himself. He left well alone. Hey, Fabius, why isn't he burning down your farm? You got some sort of a secret deal with him? But of course not. Hey, Hannibal! What? Burn my farm too, please! What? Burn my farm too, please! No! Remember our secret deal! <sighs> well, you gotta admit, he's a genius. Hannibal's problem, however, yeah. was that he had to stay on the move to keep supplying his army from the loop. It would be better just to come up north, cut him down, right? Like, because if he's deep in the Rome, and he's cut off from resources, and you play a much more uh, clever defensive position since you know your environment around you much better than Hannibal probably would. Wouldn't, wouldn't you probably have a better chance of victory? I feel like that would be better. Because if you don't go head on, then at least play an environmental defense. Local lands. At one point, he entered Campania, one of the richest regions of Italy. Great for resupply, and great for showing up Fabius in front of Rome's South Italian allies. But he was caught in a valley, and Fabius quickly moved to block his escapes. Ha <laughs> ha! We've got him! After he's used up all the valley's supplies, he'll starve. Uh, sir? What are all those lights leaving the valley? Is he trying to escape? Lights in plain view? Well, that's a trap if I've ever seen one. Suspecting a trap, Fabius refused to budge, but other Romans in the valley rushed to confront Hannibal. 
only to find the Carthaginian army was actually just a herd of oxen with torches tied to their heads. They then found themselves caught in an ambush. With the Romans distracted, Hannibal's army was able to slip away into the night unopposed. Classic Hannibal. For all his inaction, the dissatisfied Romans mockingly dubbed him Fabius the Delayer. But the thing is, Fabius' strategy was probably the best thing he could have done. Yeah. He was right that constant encounters with Hannibal were bleeding Rome dry, and the time he took allowed Rome some breathing room to recover their forces when they desperately needed to, while putting Hannibal into an increasingly more difficult position. Modern historians view Fabius' strategy as generally a good idea. To this day, the act of not engaging an enemy, but instead gradually wearing them down, is still referred to as the Fabian strategy. But when Fabius' term finally came to an end, the Senate couldn't have been happier. It was time to start fighting again. <laughs> However, they probably had a little chat about how they were going to go about it. See, Hannibal's tactics up until now had been very sneaky. Or, if you're a Roman, you might say dishonorable. <laughs> I'm sick of it! Every time we try to take this guy down, we march straight at him. But then, oh no, Hannibal's hiding in a bush. Hannibal's got 30,000 men up a tree. At this point, I'm not convinced my wife isn't just Hannibal wearing a disguise. Cooey! <laughs> Look, this time, we obviously have to switch something up. Now granted, we're Roman, so we're gonna march straight at him without thinking. That can't be helped. It's in our blood. But! <gasps> I have a proposition. This time, when we march straight at him, we do it with a massive army. I'm talking like 80,000 men. It won't matter what kind of shenanigans he pulls, he can hide in all the bushes he wants. There's no way he can possibly beat off 80,000 men. <laughs> Grow up! You know what I mean? And so it was. With two new consuls, Rome put together a massive army the biggest Rome had ever fielded to put Hannibal away once and for all. To gather the men required, two-thirds of them ended up being completely inexperienced. But how much experience does it take to be expendable war fodder? As this massive army set out in the summer of 216 BC, the Romans knew they needed to win this battle. Just one victory over Hannibal would likely be enough to end his entire campaign. And this time, their overwhelming manpower gave them confidence they could do it. Hannibal had taken position at the town of Cannae, where he had captured an important Roman supply depot. With Fabius gone, Hannibal knew a battle was likely coming, and he was eager to fight it on his terms. But when his men looked out at the Roman camp, they couldn't believe what they were seeing. That army's huge! There's no way we can possibly beat off all these men! How are we gonna beat off all of these men? <laughs> you know what I mean. I think he's right, Hannibal. Hannibal is then said to have replied, Gisco, my friend, don't worry. There may be a lot of them, but amongst their ranks, there's not a single man named Gisco. This joke was apparently so funny that his officers began to laugh and laugh. And when his men in the camp heard the laughter, they were like, hey, they're laughing. I guess that means we're gonna win the battle. Yippee! As for the Romans, the consuls were another pairing between an inexperienced hothead and a wise scholar. Although the main historian from this era was good friends with Paulus's family. So take that with a grain of salt. On his day of command, the rash and hasty Varro, despite the apparent pleas from Polis, sent the army out for battle. And when Hannibal saw this... You always have that one who wants to go in, you know, uh, take that opportunity, which I, I think, yeah, that's a, that's a really good idea, but also, don't just march in without thinking, right? You gotta be... Um, very smart and very high-witted if you're going to do that. If you're just gonna just throw men, I mean, like, I wouldn't recommend it, but then again, he has 80,000, which, I mean, if I had 80,000 men against, like, 40,000, and, you know, like, I don't know, I, I feel like I probably would have way more confidence in winning, and the guy who always loses is gonna be the guy who just is like, eh, we should wait, eh. You know? He did the same. 
And here comes the single largest battle of the Second Punic War and one of the most renowned battles in history, the infamous Battle of Cannae. In all the pre-battle maneuvering, Hannibal was able to ensure his army was fighting from the south. This meant the seasonal dust-carrying winds were to his back and blowing directly into the faces of the Romans. He focuses on Romans. every detail. Like I, I said, love it. Control. After two years in Italy, Hannibal's infantry had dwindled to about 40,000. The Romans possibly outnumbered him two to one. Their army was so big that their maniples stretched far deeper than they normally would. The Romans planned to charge Hannibal's thin, weak line like a battering ram and break it. They also chose a narrow battlefield in the hopes it would prevent Hannibal's far superior cavalry from being able to outmaneuver them. They wanted an honorable battle where pure strength rather than trickery would decide the outcome. If Hannibal had his say, however, trickery might end up having a lot to do with it. He ordered his line to position themselves as an outward bulge, with his weakest troops at the very center. Just behind them, out of sight from the Romans, stood the elite Libyan infantry, waiting for their moment to strike. The battle commenced as the uh, massive Roman yeah, troops I know the strategy. smashed into the Carthaginian center. I've the done shape it before, of Hannibal's line ensured the overwhelming weight of the Romans hit his weakest troops first, and they were pushed back. Hannibal's outward bulge reversed inward, with the Romans being funneled in towards the weak center. Yep. Hannibal had positioned and them to go deeper, deeper in, then cut him off. Positioned himself at the center to encourage the troops to hold out as long as possible against yep. the Roman onslaught. Because while the Romans were unleashing carnage on the center, Hannibal's cavalry needed time to do their job. The heavy cavalry on the left, after a barbaric fight, sent the Roman horse packing with the consul Polis, even sustaining a severe head injury. He managed to move into the center to keep the battle going. Then the heavy cavalry turned and approached Varro's cavalry from behind. At the first sight of the coming Carthaginian envelopment, Varro ordered his horsemen to flee the battlefield. The Carthaginians had won the cavalry battle. But back in the center, according to some accounts, Hannibal's line did eventually end up caving to the massive weight of the Romans, and they began to flee. The Romans pushed deeper, and organization within the army likely broke down as they became a giant mass trying to massacre the fleeing Carthaginians. They didn't realize that they were playing right into Hannibal's hands. At that moment, Hannibal's elite units, having done no fighting yet, and therefore fresh as a daisy, turned and smashed into the Roman sides. Many of these troops were wearing Roman helmets and armor they had picked up after previous battles, and the confused Romans may not have even realized they were the enemy. As Hannibal managed to regain the composure of his center and encourage them back into the fight, the Carthaginian cavalry swooped in from behind. And Bro. look at what lies before you. A military general's wet dream. The total encirclement of a much larger force by a much smaller force. The Romans were trapped. Hannibal had unbelievably managed to use their own superiority in numbers I know against that strategy. Them. Rather than simply encircling I believe them, I've... he had actually allowed them to use their own immense power and push themselves into an encircled position. Yeah. This was I've done the that strategy before. of Cannae. Like playing war games. And with that, it's such a clever the idea. annihilation began. Animal For man. hours, the Carthaginians slaughtered the helpless Romans from all sides. The terrified Romans were so remember, tightly packed that, not times, that well they couldn't even lift their arms to defend themselves. The killing went on so long that the Carthaginians became exhausted from the non-stop massacre. And by the time the butchery came to an end, so the grim brutal. toll spoke for itself. To Hannibal, several thousand lost. The Romans suffered 60 to 80,000 dead or captured. Yet another entire army wiped out 80, by Hannibal. 80,000 to 8,000. Many high-ranking Romans met Whoa. their end at Cannae. Polis, for one but also 80 senators and more. It's been estimated that 20% of Rome's male population aged 18 to 50 died at Cannae. 
This was it. Hannibal's vengeance. The stunned Carthaginians, as they searched for their own survivors Bro, in the dock, couldn't believe the Again, sight of it. What was it he talked about? No one talks about it. of blood now lay spilled on the battlefield. Rome's defeat at Cannae sent shockwaves throughout Italy. Just as Hannibal had hoped, most Bruh. of southern Italy now defected to his side, including the second largest city on the peninsula. Wow. Hannibal, this is incredible. What could possibly come next? next Rome. Jim Bob. I've killed 150,000 Romans. I've turned her allies against so her. Bloody man. That's it. That's vengeance. So let me tell you what comes next. Rome surrenders. Their territories are reduced. We recover our lost islands. And Carthage dominates the Mediterranean once again. Make the Mediterranean great But again. sir, what <laughs> if they don't surrender? Oh. Jim Bob, did you miss what just happened? Nah, Romans of don't surrender. They surrender. never surrender, man. Throughout his campaign, Hannibal had shown himself to be very adept at reading the Roman mind. But if he now thought that Rome might surrender, it was the first time he severely underestimated them. And he was about to discover an extremely inconvenient fact about Rome. Rome never surrenders. They're not, they don't care. They don't care how much they lose. Near Cannae, one young officer overheard some troops discussing how they would flee Rome. Drawing his sword, he threatened to cut down any man that would abandon Rome in its hour of need. That officer was Scipio the Younger. But soon enough, the Romans Scipio. would come to call him Scipio Africanus, the hero of Rome. Part three coming soon. No! God, be kidding me! Re really, I mean it. It won't take you here, don't worry. That's reassuring. Okay, now. Freaking Timmy. Really? Uh, coming soon. I, really? I mean it. <laughs> Bro, if they stick the gear, I. Uh, good. It was a good video. I think there was probably a lot of things that I would criticize of it, but. I really like this video, but the problem is it takes like way too long. Like this was a whole year to make these two parts. To be fair, it's like a mini movie, but I would personally prefer like a six months thing. But hey, if you enjoyed this video, you know, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. And yeah, Bennett out.